Hey guys, I'm Hetty and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm doing the Draw With Jazza Competition of the Month challenge thing. Um, this is actually my first time submitting to one of his competitions, so I was actually really excited about it. I'm not overly interested in winning as such, I just wanted to join in and try it because I really like the theme. And this month's theme is to do the Legendary Axe. He came up with a concept for an axe design and he wants everyone to give the axe a story. So for mine I thought I would do like um, contrasting themes a little and instead of like the typical warrior or dwarf or that sort of thing for the axe I wanted to go like down the magical girl route because it would break away from the typical um, stereotype of a person with an axe and my first idea was to do a transformation process of a magical school girl but mainly focusing on the axe like having it get bigger and transforming but uh, transforming but then I thought that is going to be really difficult to illustrate as one image like on one piece of paper and make it eye-catching enough so I then sticking with the magical girl theme changed my idea to because I was thinking like how does something become a legend like what does it have to do to become a legend what do you have to go through and I really wanted to use this as a way to try and illustrate emotion as well as a story because it's been since it's been a while since I've actually illustrated something to like try and get a story across in one image and try and get some feeling in that as well I mean I haven't tried to do that properly since university so I wanted to use this as a chance to test myself to see if I could still do it and I'm really happy with how this piece turned out. So my idea for this piece was to have her kind of either have defeated herself like the typical school girl, magical girl self, like the classic hyper chirpy happy girl and become like the wielder of this axe, like what do you have to be to wield such a legendary weapon? and if not defeat herself then defeat her teammates because like magical girls typically have teammates and I decided to go more with the defeating her stereotypical self because I thought it would bring a lot more depth and feeling to the piece and it would be kind of a lot more fun to illustrate but when I was doing it I decided to go down the digital route one because I was actually running out of um, Bristol board so I thought you know what, I'll just try and do it digitally and two because the effect that I wanted to get with the lighting and stuff I knew it would be really difficult for me to do with traditional media I mean I don't have my paints out my acrylic paints at the minute because I could have done it with that it would have took a lot longer but I thought it would work a lot better using um, a digital technique so I decided to get out get on my Cintiq for once and not just use it for editing videos and actually draw and yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm super happy with how this turned out. It's just one of my best digital pieces yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, here you can see I'm just trying to figure out how I want the composition of the piece to work overall. And I did sort of stretch it out a bit and shrink it back down and then decide whether I wanted to have the other magical girls in the background or just the one. And I did go with just the one and I wanted it to be like the leader of the group. You know, like they're normally in the pinks and the reds and the most happy, happy hyper, chir chirpy person. And that's who she was supposed to be. But now she's, because she's wielding this legendary weapon, she's not like that anymore so I changed the colour scheme to go down more of the steampunk route to match the colours of the axe and I still wanted her to look a little bit like it so I did actually give her like a pinkish tone to her hair but other than that I wanted to go more following the theme and the colour scheme of the axe um, when I was colouring it I couldn't decide if I actually wanted to do colour on her dress or just stay with the black and white but I really wanted to use this chance to practice getting values right because like when I use my markers and stuff I know if I put any of those drawings onto Photoshop and put them into black and white and check the values on them to make sure like the correct amount of light and shading is there I know there wouldn't be 
which is probably not a good thing to admit, but I know I that's not something I really strive for in my work. I try and just illustrate what's in my head and not worry about the lighting too much, which is something I definitely want to improve on. And I thought I can use this as a chance to practice doing that using digital means where I can swap between the the grayscale and the colour. And it took a while. I mean, I had to keep swapping from the black and the white background, knowing I had to, I wanted to have a black background. It was just when I'd do it on the white, it would look fine, but I'd put it onto the black background and it would just like either some bits were too dark or some bits were ridiculously too light. There wasn't enough shading on it. And it definitely helped train my eye to see that, you know, there is more shading in the world. Because the big panic I have is not, if I do it too dark, it's not going to look right. It's just going to look too harsh. But sometimes there are harsh shadows. And that is something I realised when doing this piece that I need to start doing more in my other pieces. So even with the axe, I kept swapping between the grayscale and the colour just to make sure it was right. And I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I spent the extra bit of time to do that because I think that definitely helped the piece. And um, after colouring in the axe, I decided I was just going to take the colour out of her, like take the, the colour of the dress away. And I kept a little tint of colour on the skin tone just to separate it from the black and grey of the dress. But I knew I wanted most of the colour then at that point to just be from the light reflected, like um, casting a shadow and everything over her body, like illuminating her, that's the word, from the light rings that, that are on the axe. And it was um, a little difficult. I don't think I got the lighting correct after doing that because I just kind of did an overlay and I think I rushed it a little bit too much, but it's something I want to improve on. But I'm glad I could see this as a way to improve my own work. This piece has helped me realise a lot of things I do need to improve and want to improve in my work that I didn't see before when I was just sticking to traditional art. But, uh, I don't know why I'm so out of breath. <laughs> um, yeah, you can see there's the pinkish tone on her hair there that will match the girl in the background. One thing I did realise is a really bad habit I've got when doing digital art is I don't keep track of the layers I'm using enough. I mean, you can see there, there's I've used 41 layers and I just kept losing track of them. I didn't, I just couldn't do it. I was like, got mixed up. At first I was putting them all in folders and they were all nice and organised, but then they weren't. And that's something I definitely need to work on next time. And yeah, um, for the colours for her, the magical girl in the background, I was going to leave it that bright, but then I thought, no, it needs to be toned down. It's too vibrant. It's taking your eye away from the axe. And yeah. Anyway, I'm really happy with how this piece turned out and like I said earlier, I'm not bothered if I win or not, it was more just the point of entering it, but I hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe and I hope you like the artwork and I will see you next time. Bye!